Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Well, hey there. I am so glad you are here, and I am so excited to share another episode with you. I'm Jessica Peresta, your host of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, and you're listening to episode 91. Today is a solo episode with me, and I am going to talk all about what flowers and teaching music have in common. Yes, you heard me right. (laughs) So the other day on Instagram, I posted a bouquet of flowers, and there is a purpose behind this. Everything I share on social media or on this podcast or my blog or wherever else has a purpose. I don't just post to post. And so I started thinking about after I posted this to Instagram, I want to turn this into a podcast episode because I feel like I have so much to share about this. And you're like, what in the world does this have to do with teaching music? Well, stick with me. I promise you're going to get something from this, hopefully. So when I posted to Instagram, the bouquet of flowers, I posted a quote that simply says, every flower must grow through dirt. And you're like, well, no, duh. I mean, obviously, it has to grow through dirt. But what I meant by that is that quote, actually, I read a few years ago, and it stuck with me because it's just really good. Um, I want you to think about a flower. Okay, so whether you go in a grocery store or flower shop, or even, you know, you're outside in a garden or wherever else you see a flower, you know, where you see flowers, that you see the finished product, you see the flower, you see the beautiful colors and the rose petals or whatever flower petals there are. And I don't know why I just said rose, but you see the finished product. You don't see the time that flower took to grow. You don't see how long it was under even, it was even under the dirt. You don't see that part. You see the finished flower. And so we're going to talk in this episode today about how teaching music can compare to a flower? What do they have in common? And so the first thing I want to say is a flower starts as a seed. It starts actually usually as an idea, right? Um, Someone decides someone has to plant the seed or the seed just blew on the ground somehow. But you can tell how much I know about gardening. Wow. But (laughs) so it has to start as a seed underneath the dirt. Someone or something has planted that seed under the ground. And you don't see growth for a while. A lot of times that seed is underneath the ground. It can be weeks or even a month or however, it, whatever type of flower it is, how long, however long it takes for that seed to sprout under, um, from under the ground to above the dirt. So it starts with being planted. Actually, let's go back. It starts with an idea. So you had an idea to become a music teacher, or maybe this idea was given to you by someone else saying, I I know several people in this community who listen to this podcast, even you were asked to become the music teacher because there was a, a, um, a position open or a need in your school building, and they knew you had a musical background. So it started with an idea either by you or someone else asking you to fill a position. Well, the idea turn into a seed being planted. You had to, okay, you had to start coming up with an idea and be planted in the ground and be planted in that position. So it starts as a seed, a flower does, that turns into a bud that eventually shapes into a flower. The same thing can be said for teaching music. The seed is the very first day, actually before you even step into your classroom for the first time. You are, a seed is being planted, you're being prepared, whether it's in college or workshops or um, other trainings online or in person, you are being prepared. That's the seed that is being planted. It turns into a bud and that can be compared to your first year teaching, your first year in a new position, Uh, your, whether it's your fifth year teaching, you're still in a bud, the bud season, and then you're going to eventually take shape into a flower. And so let me break this down a little bit. 
The flower, like I said, takes time to grow. And the same thing can be said for music teachers. One of the main things I hear from music teachers in my audience is uh, you don't feel like growth is happening fast enough or you feel like you should have it all together by now or you should just, you know, have all the confidence in the world and you should just, you're, you shouldn't feel like you're still spinning your wheels anymore. And unfortunately, this, it couldn't be further than the, further from the truth. Of course, I would love to just snap my fingers and let every music teacher listening to this right now have all the confidence in the world and be able to go in your classroom tomorrow and feel like you have everything together, everything related to classroom management, school dynamics, teaching in your classroom, lesson planning, all the things is going to go awesome. And it's just going to be, you know, you're going to have the perfect week. But unfortunately, this is that's just not always the case. Just like it takes a while for a flower to see growth and to turn from a little, an idea to a seed, to a bud, to a flower, the same thing can be said for music teachers. Now, you're like, well, how long is it going to take me to grow in my position and to grow into the music teacher I want to be? Well, let's go back to the very beginning of this episode where I said every flower, it depends on what kind of flower it is to determine how long it's going to take to grow and flourish. The same thing can be said for you. I don't know if you've listened to any of the episodes I've recorded, but every, I almost said every single one, and a lot of the episodes I have said that you're not a robot. You're a person. And what's cool about you being a person is you're a unique individual with unique skill sets, talents, a personality, unlike anyone else in this whole entire world. There's only one you. So what that means is the growth you're going to see won't look the same as anyone else because you are growing in your timing. Your brain doesn't work like anyone else's either. So what may come quickly to others with figuring out new ideas or just getting it or, oh, I have, I, I got this teaching singing to my kids down. I got it. They, they just started flourishing and singing and I'm not having to, you know, think of new ways to do that anymore. They just get it. Or you see another teacher who just started implementing recorders for the first time and it's just going amazingly well and it's their first year to ever do recorders and you feel like maybe this is your fourth year to teach recorders and you still don't quite feel like you have a handle on it. I want to tell you right now to let that, take a deep breath and let that go. Um, letting go the expectations you have put on yourself because I'll be the first to sit here and say that I am the hardest on myself than anyone else. And it's just, everybody is that way. You are your worst critic. And so let the expectations you have for yourself go and know that you will grow in confidence as a music teacher in your own timing. Give yourself grace and room to grow. Give yourself grace and room to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes because I truly believe there is not a mistake that is, let me rephrase that. I think every mistake you can and will learn from is what I'm trying to say. You, if you mess up, we all have and all will. You're going to make mistakes in your classroom and mess up with students and say things you shouldn't have said when it comes to a lesson or teach things the wrong way or the lesson plan, the way you had it written on paper is not the way it came out of your mouth to teach is what I'm trying to say. And so what I'm trying to get at is, but you can go back to the drawing board and say, okay, why did that not go good? What what could have gone better? Why did today kind of fall apart right in front of my eyes? And you can learn from your mistakes. And you know what's really cool is when you learn from your mistakes, that's what helps you grow. That's what helps you gain confidence. And that's what makes you show up every day and every week and continue teaching music to those kids who need you so, so much. The other thing I want to say is... Um, that a flower, I don't know if you've seen a flower uh, that is like in a field of other flowers. Let's talk about wildflowers. You can look in a field of wildflowers and there is not, um, they may be the same color. Like let's say there's, um, I don't know, I'm just going to use this as, as an example. There's yellow, orange, and pink um, wildflowers in a field. Well, even if you look at the same yellow ones, like they'll say you look at two yellow ones side by side, they're not going to have the same amount of petals. They may not have the same amount, uh, the, the same length of a stem. They might have different amount of leaves. 
and so on and so forth. And so they are not comparing themselves, though. You don't see a flower pop out of the ground and go, mm, they have eight, eight petals on their flower and I only have seven, so I just need to shrivel up. No, a flower just grows. It just turns into who it's supposed to be in its own timing and it just blossoms into the flower it was created to be the seed that was planted and the color it was meant to be it doesn't compare itself to other flowers so the same thing can be said for you as a music teacher don't compare yourself like I just said to other teachers because you are you you are a unique teacher and I think that is what the world needs we all need different personalities and different music teachers because one thing I haven't said is on this podcast very much is when you go to different workshops and experiences, even if you're not the presenter, you're there to be an attendee, you will learn so much just from the other music teachers that have attended. And you know why? Because none of them are teaching exactly the way that you teach. I don't know how many times this has happened to me where all of a sudden you get a new idea, new song, a new suggestion, a new way of doing things in your classroom just because you met another music teacher who gave you a fresh approach and a fresh idea that you had just never had thought of. Why? Because their personality and their teaching style might be a little different than yours. But that's a good thing because they are able to help you. And their growth, like I said, doesn't look the way yours does. So it's not about comparing yourself because you need to be confident in who you are because guess what? Just the same way that those music teachers are able to help you, you have something to give as well. I promise you, you might be sitting there going, um, there's nothing I can say to help other people. Oh, no, no, no. That's not, that could, that is not true at all. <laughs> in my Harmony membership, there are music teachers in there every day who started out with no confidence and who are now the ones in the group helping other music teachers out every single day. And I am just so amazed by that because their confidence has grown enough and these ideas that they're sharing with other music teachers, they're... The other music teacher is like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Thanks so much. So you don't know what value you have to give until you just try, until you just say something that ends up sticking with someone else. So I want you to know that, that you do have something to offer. And like I said, don't compare yourself to other teachers because you have a unique skill set and gifting that other music teachers may not have, and they need the support that you have to give. So keep watering and nurturing, just like you nurture and water a flower to see it grow. The way you keep nurturing and watering yourself for growth is by continuing to surround yourself with other music teachers who can lift you up, continuing to find training opportunities, continuing to just show up, like I said, every day and doing the work and teaching and modifying lessons and trying new things and a new songs, a new way of doing things and a new way the uh, lesson plan flows in your classroom and um, take out activities, add in new ones. Just keep growing and nurturing and watering to see growth in yourself. And eventually you're going to look back after a year and go, oh my gosh, the things I used to stress out about in my classroom and the things that used to be so hard for me are now just like second nature. Why? Because you just kept trying and kept going. It didn't stop. You didn't give up. And that is exactly like if you think about a flower, it just grows. It doesn't, it doesn't sit there and, you know, say, oh, that was too hard. It's too hard. It's taking too long for me to grow. Might as well just stop. I'll just stay a little bud. No, it just keeps, it keeps getting nurtured. It keeps getting watered. It has sunlight. It just keeps, whatever a flower needs to grow, it just keeps getting it. And that's what it, whatever it needs to get to grow, it does. It gets what it needs. That sentence was really confusing, but you know what I'm trying to say. It just continues to grow because it's getting what it needs, the nutrients it needs. And so the nutrients you need as a music teacher is what I already said about just surrounding yourself with other music teachers and ways to grow and teaching your kiddos. And the last thing I want to say is think about pruning and allowing for new growth. And just like a flower that in the wintertime, there's some plants and flowers that will die, but then they will bloom again come spring. The same thing goes for you. You are always going to be allowing for new growth. And we've already talked about, you know, adjusting lesson plans or classroom management system or whatever else you know what you need to do. When you need to prune something, allowing yourself to do that will allow for new growth because it's okay to change things up and not to do the same thing that's not working every year. The biggest thing I think you can do for yourself is to allow yourself to 
um, stay open to having constructive criticism. And when someone is making, giving you an idea or a fresh approach or um, suggestion to not take offense to it, but just see it as an opportunity to grow and to, yeah, just you'll see growth that way by just allowing yourself to prune off a few of the things that were not working. And then you'll allow for new growth, just like a flower does. And then you're also going to like, I said earlier, continue to bring joy and happiness to others in your music teacher community and your school building, in fact, into your students, just like flowers do. Flowers bring us so much happiness. There's just something about them. And maybe you're not a flower person and that's okay. But when someone gives you flowers or even you just see flowers, they're just some, they're just pretty, they're bright, they're colorful, and they're just, they bring joy to people. So the same thing for you as a music teacher, don't forget how much joy and happiness you are bringing to others around you just because of what you do and the person you are and you're making a difference each and every day in the lives of your students. So I hope you got something from this episode. I know it was a little bit random, but I just wanted to share this episode because it was on my heart and I really feel like I was supposed to share this message with someone. So I hope you guys are having an amazing day and an amazing week and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.